Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else in hopes that it all ends in a satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time they're introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. For reference, we are only observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No, future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. Secret scenes may be included to flesh out the story and all character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And now with that, 39 days, 20 people, one survivor. Laura Moret, a 39-year-old office manager from Oregon and also the mother of future Survivor legend Sierra Easton, was a castaway on season 19, Survivor Samoa. The Sierra part won't matter until Laura's next video, but do know that I am very much ready to cover it. Anyways, yeah, this is Survivor's first visit to Samoa and what a beautiful location. This season features 20 all-new players split onto the yellow Foa Foa tribe and the purple Galu. Laura Moret is on the purple Galu tribe and right away Jeff says hi. Time to pick a leader for your tribe, even though you don't know each other. Fun. Considering how often Jeff mentions the importance of a leader at tribals, it is about time the show made picking one a game mechanic. Foa Foa picks Mick as their leader, but for Glue, they pick Russell Swan. A solid choice, as we immediately recognize he will take the role seriously. Despite good picks by Swan for the reward challenge, uh, Glue does lose, and Jeff says, you all are definitely the underdogs. Upon arriving at their camp, Swan gives everyone instructions, and they follow it without question. Wow, no kickback, no small talk, no smack talk. Nothing. They just get right to work. This is unusual. And in this secret scene, we see how Laura and the rest of the women are immediately connecting. Hey, you know what we're going to need? What we need one of you guys to do is we need a palm frond split up the middle. You need a really leafy one like that. It's definitely a social awkwardness that she has with everybody. And she just doesn't get when she does something that annoys people. She just doesn't get it. She's 45 years old and you'd think by that time you'd get how to interact with people. And that, that frustrates me because I don't even like to be around her. I've never spent a lot of time with somebody like Shambo. The overt aggression and the overt tomboyish behavior I think turns a lot of people off, especially when you have pretty girls here. Like the hot chicks we have around here aren't as likely to connect with someone like Shambo that's just a brute and there's no way you can get around that. It's in your face 24 seven. This is only the beginning. Shambo is an outlier on her tribe as they all get along and she just doesn't fit in because, well, she doesn't want to and she doesn't try to. We then go to the immunity challenge where best group of people I could ever meet. Everybody's pulling their weight. Everybody tough as nails. Jeff, I've never read that book. <laughs> Things losers say. Okay, that was really good. That was good. Can we start this, Jeff? Because I'm ready to open some cans of whoop ass. I am so glad the underdog Galoo tribe made the smack talking foa foa have to shut their pie holes. Back at camp, we see Shambo say, everyone, I got this. I can make the fire. And uh, she really can't. She sucks at it and Dave Ball has to get it going instead. So that's it for the premiere. And if it weren't for secret scenes, I'd be asking who the heck is Laura? In the show proper, it's all about Russell Swan and Shambo on the Glue Tribe. So I'm hoping the next few episodes finally flesh out her character a little bit more. By the way, if you want to pick what I cover for videos and watch everything up to six months early, then consider joining my Once Upon an Island Patreon. You can cancel at any time and there is a 15% discount if you do sign up for one year. Thank you for your support. We move on to episode two where we see a secret scene of Eric, Laura, and Monica finding some fruit and eating it. 
but hiding it from their tribe. They don't want them to know where the fruit is. Already, we see how close Laura and Monica are, but enough of that for now because it is time for Schmergen Brawl, a reward challenge that's kind of like a mix of rugby and basketball. Basically, people smack and tackle each other to get the ball to their shooters, and Jeff is constantly warning people to not break the rules, but like no one's listening. Heck, Laura even tries to choke out Natalie White. He then says, okay, final warning everyone, anyone who breaks the rules again is gone, no questions asked. And not but like a minute later, Ben kicks Swan in the back of the leg and is ejected. What a tool. He says he doesn't care and he isn't apologizing for it. So now it's time. Who will win this immunity challenge? Laura goes underhand. Laura right scores for Galoo. Yeah. Three, one. Galoo wins reward and immunity. Laura does it again. And also Mike Barassi is pulled out of the game due to medical reasons. So just like that, Galoo is up 10 to seven. So much for being underdogs. Back at camp, Shamba decides again to take out the tribe's new reward items. And just like the fire making kit, she isn't great with the fishing gear either. And... You guys want the good news or the bad news? Bad news. Bad news? Yeah. I had no luck in the ocean. I was in the... You broke the... Uh... I didn't break it. It floated off while I was in the swamp. I wasn't using the mouthpiece. I was using the, the mask. You couldn't find it? It's in the swamp. There's, There's nothing, nothing I can out. do. And the good news? There are hundreds of thousands of fish on the reef, so... The good news is, you'll never believe it. There's fish in the ocean. You know, I feel sorry for her in one sense because she's kind of desperate right now trying to catch fish. And then on top of not catching the fish, she loses our stuff. You just signed your own death warrant is basically what you did. Dude, Laura and Shambo don't like each other at all. And as we move to episode three, their rivalry takes the next step when right now we're winning we're feeling good there's great morale we're working hard we're all pitching in at camp we're all doing stuff exhale out so we don't have to always be in game mode and that's a huge huge advantage that we have over FOA. are you freaking kidding me we got four people doing yoga this morning. Kind of alienated from my tribe because I'm not in the 90210 click. I'm not doing the warm and fuzzy. I'm doing the Rambo Shambo provider roll out here. Do we have water? No. Do we have food? No. Do we have firewood? No. Screw yoga, man. Someone is going to win this war between Shambo and Laura, and I just don't know who that will be yet. The glue tribe goes on to win reward and immunity again and now they're up 10 to 6 over foa foa but then russell swan is given a choice for his tribe he can either choose comfort in the form of pillows and blankets or function in the form of a tarp he picks comfort almost immediately and says this is for the ladies because this is what they want all of the ladies especially laura are thrilled about this and the men are like what the heck but i need to mention that laura is the leader of these women now except for shambo they all adore and follow her and swan also gets to send one person to foa foa to spy on them and he sends shambo who instantly connects with them and makes fun of galoo doing yoga foa foa is like who has time to do yoga in this day and age we moved to episode four where shambo comes back to camp and doesn't feel welcomed in fact she says she feels closer to foa foa now and is likely to flip to them come the chance but let's ignore that for now because Galoo wins reward aka chickens and when Swan comes back with them Laura plants a big kiss right on him which has got to be preferable to Shambo clucking like a chicken when they arrive and then clucking at the chickens all day and even the next day she's still doing it and Swan's like what the heck but then Shambo lets a chicken loose on accident but still she says I didn't know chickens could fly could this day get any worse well yes Yes, it can. They lose immunity and back at camp, Russell Swan says Monica is worthless at challenges and she needs to go. However, Monica is Laura's number one ally. So everyone else says, what about Shambo? She's annoying everyone or Yasmin because she's super lazy. So we go to tribal council where everyone votes and I think you said it yourself. You sit around camp and wait for somebody to tell you what to do. You can't sit around. You got to take initiative. Fourth person voted out of Survivor Samoa. Yasmin. Yasmin, chopper spoken. Sham. Oh, Sham for sure. about her that's socially awkward, and so he's like, 
Whereas we could just sit here and just chill and not do anything, anything about it. <laughs> If Shambo weren't such a mess and a detriment to the group, I would label that moment as villainous. But Lore is basically speaking for the tribe and I can't disagree. Galoo does win reward, but it isn't a tarp, which sucks, so now all of those comfort items are wet. At the immunity challenge, it is a blowout as Russell Swan and Laura beat Russell Hans and Liz easily. Episode 6 continues the rain and apparently it's now been 5 days straight of this. Wow. But finally, it breaks and a rainbow comes out right before the reward challenge where Jeff says, hey, sucks to suck because both tribes are going to tribal no matter what. This challenge you're playing for is just for pizza. And considering that Russell Swan has been overworking himself at camp and this is just for pizza, multiple people say, hey, just sit out. It's not a big deal. You need the rest. And he says, no, I'm good. So with Laura leading their tribe in the challenge. Left, Russ, left, left, Russ, left. Hold on. <sighs> no idea where he's at right okay. now. Down. The ball is right in the middle, then we have to go down towards the Whoa! Russell, are you with me? I'm good. He, he was out. Yeah, he was sure. definitely out. Yeah. Russ? Russ? Russ, are you with us? Hold in. Russ? Russell. Russ, talk to me. Russ, talk to me. Russell, Russell, wake up, mate. Wake up. There? Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what just happened? Huh? His heart rate was 97 when we sat him up and now it's 68. Okay. And it dropped. It dropped like really that. suddenly. Don't feel comfortable getting him in. Not with his heart doing what it's doing. My family depends on me to be the strong one. Is this how you want this no. to end? No. No. It's frustrating to be pulled out of a game you wanted to be a part of for so long. You were in great shape. You were the leader of a tribe that was dominating. You were no sign that you were going home anytime soon. You pushed and pushed and pushed your body until your body said, enough. There's nothing about that that is a quitter. Now, that whole scary sequence of events actually eats up a large portion of this episode since they call off the vote due to Swan being pulled. It's too bad because he was doing an excellent job leading them. Back at camp, it's raining again, but Laura misses Swan and says they're going to have to refocus and move on, but it's going to be hard to do because he was a good leader. But if they do go to travel soon, you better believe Shambo's gone. If we were going to travel council right now, Shambo's going, 100%. She's never really gelled with the tribe and she's been over to the other tribe but none of us have. And so when we merge, she could very easily swap sides. What's, what's the skinny baby? We're voting somebody off tonight. See, I'm just asking you guys to not write my name down today. Mm -hmm. I mean, I started the fire the first eight days we were here. Yeah. Chief and I collected 100% of the firewood the first eight days we were here. I have been a good competitor, an honest competitor, a fair competitor. I have not lied to anyone in this game. That's fine, but despite the fact my name got written down twice, the only person here that wrote it down last tribal was you. Who, who made fire for you the first eight days you were here, Monica? Who kept you warm and dry and safe? Who didn't write my name down? Everyone else in this tribe except for you. Remember earlier when I mentioned that Laura and Monica are close? Well, others see this and they want to split them up, namely John. However, with Swan gone, they are required to pick a new leader. And in a vote that kind of catches everyone off guard, Shambo's chosen. Is this a joke? Shambo's the leader? Why are they feeding into her ego? Anyways, their tribe does win reward thanks to Laura, and with that, Shambo gets to send one player to Foa Foa for the day and not get the reward, and that player is... I'm gonna send Laura over to Foa Foa because I need to keep my guys strong for our challenge tomorrow, and I'm not sending myself for a third time. Now it's Shambo's chief. It's like she was raised in a trailer park, married a rich guy, now she's driving around a Jaguar, treating everyone like crap, you know? She sent Laura over to the other tribe and Laura's one of our strongest females. I don't know if she has strategy. I don't know if she's just pulling this out of her ass. I don't know. Yeah, I figured so Sham would yeah. send me. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I figured she would. There's definitely an undercurrent why Sham sent me over to the Foa Foa tribe. I mean, I mean, clearly she doesn't like me. Okay, so you have twins. Mm-hmm. I have twin girls. No, I'm, my dad's a preacher. Please? I'm a theology student. Really? Mm-hmm. You got my degree in women's ministries? I swear to you, you can trust me. What are we going to do? Go to the final two, the two of us? Final together? two. Russell came to me and was conspiring to have this secret alliance that clearly nobody would ever suspect. And, you know, that's another card that I stick in my pocket that I might want to play. I mean, 
you know, it's just food for thought. You know, when it comes down to it, I hope it's final three. Because you know what I hope? I, I would hope it would be me, you, and Natalie in the final three. Well, I was happy when they decided to send Laura to our camp because it doesn't look like we're going to go with numbers and to emerge. So what I have to do now is work my Houdini magic on Laura. I can spot a good Christian any time. It's easy. There's no immunity out of here. Did she find it? Ben found it and didn't play it. Now, Laura doesn't really know Russell Hance, so I guess you could take that deal at face value, but it does seem off since they just met. And so does him being a Christian. He doesn't seem authentic at all. This is immediately contrasted with her hanging out with Natalie, who seems very genuine, especially when they're discussing their faith. And yeah, it's almost like night and day between these two people. Although Natalie doesn't offer an alliance, Galoo goes on to win immunity. And with that, we enter episode eight, where Shambo and Laura just go at it. I don't know what's going on with me and Shambo. When I got sent over to the other tribe, Dave handed her my canteen. I didn't care. But when I came back to camp, I said, where is it? And then she makes this huge big deal and then all of a sudden brings up all these other things that I have no idea what she's even talking about. There's some like little power struggle going on between you and I, and I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't like it. Now, how you perceive that, if your feelings get hurt and if you're like, well, what's her problem? Well, that's on you. It wasn't a fight about canteens. It really is the way that she treats me on a regular basis. It's almost like those popular girls in high school that are cheerleaders that want to snob their nose at people that don't fit into their circle. I'm done with her. I have no use for her. None. You have a way of turning things about. So like, now I look like the bad person. Like I blew this whole thing up. Like, where's my canteen? Where's my canteen? What is this about a canteen? They're totally arguing over nothing. Absolutely nothing. To be honest, we know Shambo's crazy. So if you get in a fight with Shambo, who's the one that looks bad? You look bad. If you fight with Shambo, that means you're just as crazy as her, only you're not really crazy. You're just being a bitch. Congratulations, Fofo and Galoo. You, you are now on track. track. Uh, I am guessing Shambo's flipping as soon as possible, but Galoo does have an eight to four lead. So even if Shambo flips, it would be seven to five. It's not enough to give Foa Foa the upper hand. Though that lead is the largest for any tribe going into the merge ever to this point. This should be an easy pagonging of Foa Foa. And from there, Laura should be able to secure her spot in the final three alongside Monica and Kelly, since they seem to connect the best with her. Well, everyone feasts and we see Natalie and Laura reconnect immediately. Hey, maybe Natalie can go to the final three with Laura and Monica. Who cares? Either way, Laura Laura should win. Hans and Laura also reconnect and you know this is if you could take me to the top seven, I'll hand it to you. I swear I will. I can't believe Russell showed me he had the idol. But you know what? Desperate people do desperate things. I don't believe he would give that to me, but just knowing that he has it is huge, which means when we do get rid of him, it's gonna have to be a big blind side. Who do you want the first one to go? One of my guys? It'll be one of your guys or Shambo. Right. It's kind of funny. Russell came to me with this attitude of like, I'm the boss and here's some rules, he tells me. And I'm like, okay, well, just so you know, I kind of hold all the cards right now and um, you just need to try and stay alive. You are in a worse position than myself at this point. You're coming here with 10%, I got 90. All right. Laura's digging her own grave. She told me, I'm 90% in charge of this, Russell. You're about 10% right now. In other words, sit down and listen. <laughs> no, it don't work like that for me. Okay. She might be the first to go. Well, so much for the deal he offered last episode. I guess that broke down super quick. These two seem to be at war already. Fun. Shambo and Hans then connect and they bond over their hatred of Laura. And I do mean hatred. They call her a spiteful snake and they want her gone first. I don't know how without numbers this can happen. Maybe Russell can play his idol correctly because he does have an idol. So we go to the immunity challenge where apparently Laura's life is on the line and. Laura lands it in the four. Laura wins individual immunity. Congratulations. When I saw Laura win immunity, I got a gut-wrenching feeling in my stomach. The plan had been put into motion. We're gonna write down Laura's name tonight, and now we can't. So, that sucked, because I really wanted her gone. Ha ha, Shambo is sad, but who cares? That's only good for Laura. Eric says, these FOA FOA members suck. They can't win anything. And Laura then talks to him and says, we need a way to flush out Russell's idol, but without directly targeting Russell, because 
obviously that would backfire. But then out of left field, John says, forget targeting Foa Foa, they aren't a threat. And he talks to Eric and says, we need to get out Monica to weaken Laura. What? It is far too soon for this nonsense. And he is dead serious. He even tells Eric his plan and Eric's like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. What is this whole weakening strategy? Like they have the lead, just get rid of Foa Foa. It's just like, it's dumb all around. So then this happens. Eric came to us and he was like, well, y'all four need to be on He's freaking out. Why is he freaking out? He wants all of the girls gone. I don't trust Eric. Why can't we get him out first? Hey, Kel, what's up? Okay. She okay. wants to know the people. Think of it this way, Galoo still has plenty of people. Lenny. Kelly and Laura, I just basically let them know that Eric needed to go now. We have four people, they have eight. It's not a big deal if they lose one. Now Eric is getting blamed for the plan that John came up with. It's so dumb, but the emotions are running high as Laura and Kelly start telling everyone that Eric is a snake and he needs to go. And in a secret scene, we see CGI Brett say, this is all emotion. Let's just vote off a FOA FOA member tonight and reconsider Eric at the next vote. So we go to tribal council where, sorry, e, but your own paranoia was your demise. The minute that you decided to go against Galoo and turn against the girls, you had to go. If I know the heaven, I might as well play it. This is a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for Russell tonight will not count. First vote, Jason. Jason. Two votes, Jason. Eric. Eric. Two votes, Jason. Two votes, Eric. Eric. That's three votes, Eric. 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 That's five votes, Eric. Eric. Six votes, Eric. Seventh person voted out of Survivor Samoa and the first member of our jury. Eric. Eric, Trump has spoken. In case you don't already know, Russell Hance is the main character of this season. It's not even close. So uh, when Laura goes against him, she's the villain, despite her view being rational from a bird's eye view, from a third party's perspective. But the show presents Russell as this Picasso, as this genius, as the Michael Jordan of Survivor, and anyone who's against him is evil. I say this because Laura calls Russell's idol play dumb and says he is gone next. We then see a secret scene where Laura and Kelly are connecting and Kelly says this game is easy and there isn't anything to be stressed about. Uh oh, that's usually not a good sign when they show us that. We then get another secret scene where Shambo and Laura talk about Shambo's family and... How many of you are there? Nine kids. My uh, the brother passed away, right? My brother Terry died of meningitis when he was about three months old. And then my sister Donna died of cancer the day before her 27th birthday. That's sad. Well, they're better off. How old were you? I was 23, I was stationed in Okinawa, and I remember my staff sergeant saying, Corporal Waters, go back to the barracks, you got an emergency phone call from the Red Cross. I just started bawling. I was like, God dang it. Come on, where's our sunshine? Laura and I did not have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Laura invaded a private moment that I was having on the beach where I was really homesick. I was missing my family and I started thinking about my sister that had passed away over 20 years ago. I was just, I was pretty much broken down and sad and she wanted to play buddy buddy with me and her little reach out and touch me superficial bull. I can't stand Laura. I want no conversations with her. You don't even like me and you want to sit here and pretend like you're befriending me. It's just like, don't make me throw up on your face. You can tell by Laura's face that she doesn't really care. And it may have been better just to not talk to Shambo at all rather than pretend. Yeah. Russell and Shambo then talk and say once again, Laura, AKA Medusa, that's her new name now. That's what Russell calls her at least, is next unless she wins immunity. So we go to the immunity challenge where. Laura wins individual immunity. Safe tonight at tribal council. Laura is safe at tonight's tribal council. Oh, the challenge sucked because Laura won and now we can't vote her off and my heart is broken. I'm so sad. I'm pissed. Again, ha ha, Shambo is sad, but 
Who cares? Back at camp, Laura says Russell is a goner. He doesn't have his idol anymore, so this is going to be easy. In fact, Natalie might even join us in on this vote. It's going to be that simple. Monica then says, let's split our votes just in case Russell does have another idol. And Dave says, nah, that's not going to be necessary. He can't find idols without clues. Laura then says, foe a foe will be picked off one after another until Galoo becomes the final seven. Very evil when the show wants us to root for foe a foe, and especially Hans. So we go to tribal council, where... He lied to me from day one, and so it's hard to build a trustworthy relationship from there. Sorry. I ain't finished playing just yet. Keep hope alive. This is an idol. Any votes cast against Russell will not count. First vote. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Russell, that's three votes. Russell, none of them count. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Kelly. Oh my God. Two votes, Kelly. Just what the hell is what he did? Eighth person voted out of Survivor Samoa and the second member of our jury. Kelly. Kelly, the tribe has spoken. It is episode 10 and Laura says she knew Russell was sneaky and so she should have known he had another idol. Shambo even laughs and says Laura being blindsided tonight was so sweet and she wants to give Russell another idol to make it happen again. Laura's team then wins reward but weirdly enough the entire reward is from Natalie's perspective. Hmm. They then get a clue to the next idol and Laura's like crap I gotta stop Russell when we get back to camp. So when they do get back there. We totally underestimated Russell's capability of finding the idol. What we need to do is keep that hidden immunity idol out of Russell's hands. Looking for the same thing I'm looking for, Jason? I don't know. What are you looking for? <laughs> You're the one that's lifting up rock. I know that it has to be where that wall is in camp. They have a rock in a little hoe, square hoe. Looks like the rock in the picture to me. There it is. Oh, my God. And my butt's probably in the sling more than ever. But not if they think I have an idol. I'm a BA okay. <laughs> so much focus is on Russell that you wouldn't even know that Laura could target Mick and Jason to weaken him. But whatever, I guess. Monica then talks to her and says, hey, rumor is that not only is Shambo flipping to Foa Foa, but another Galoo member is as well. We just don't know exactly who that is yet. So now we're down six to four, just like that, if it's true. Remember, they had an eight to four lead to start this merge, and here we are. How did Galoo collapse so fast? Laura says, well, I guess I need immunity or I'm likely the next target. So we go to the immunity challenge, where... <laughs> No shot at immunity for Laura. Mick wins individual immunity. I believe it is the destiny of Laura to go home. Today is the day of reckoning. Medusa's head will be lopped off. Well, shoot, hopefully that glue member flipping rumor isn't true. It wouldn't be Monica or CGI Brett. They seem loyal. So is it Dave or is it John? I think we know the answer to this one. Well, Laura talks to Dave and John and says we should wait till the last minute to make a decision. And by that, I mean, let's target Russell. Why would she say that and then say, let's target Russell two seconds later? It's confusing. John says, no, Russell could pull the same trick again with the idol. Let's get Natalie. No way would she have an idol and no way would anyone play an idol for her. Though John does worry about rock draw if they do get back to back tie votes. We then see a secret scene between Russell and Laura where. Can I ask one thing, a favor from me, one thing. I don't want to be the one that gets blindsided. If you tell me, I'll just go. You can tell me right before, you can tell me 10 minutes before, or a minute before. I want to see Russell go home tonight. The tough part for me in this game is that balance of of lying to somebody. Nope, I don't, I don't want to lie to somebody. But can you manipulate them enough to where you can avoid the line? You know what, I don't know. I can't make you that promise. Um, because I also have allegiance to other people, but if it's okay with them, then I will totally give you a heads up. Well, you're the one on the tribe that lied to all of us. Right. That's the huge thing. They played the game the hardest. Yeah, everybody plays the game different. No, you're the. I played the game hard. I didn't lie to you. Did you lie to Eric? 
think blonde side of it is not blonde? He I told, told him, him right up front. No, I didn't tell him he was going to go home. I never told him he was going to go home. He never asked me. I didn't come out here to just camp for 39 days. I came out here to win a million dollars. And I owe Russell nothing. Absolutely nothing. I owe Russell my vote to get him off the island is what I owe Russell. At Tribal Council, Shambo says, Galoo isn't tight. And Laura says, we absolutely are. We are a tight tribe. And Jeff steps in and says, whoa, if Galoo is tight and Shambo's part of Galoo and she's defecting, then Galoo isn't tight. And Laura says, hmm, not necessarily. Hmm. Well, they all go to vote, and... We tried and tried again to get you to come to our tribe, but you just wouldn't, so we gotta cut you. Bye now. Laura, you are a viperous poison. I pray to God you go tonight. The other day you told me that I may be faster than you, but you're smarter than me. You see, that's why you're going home tonight. You underestimated me. First vote. Laura. Natalie. One vote Laura. One vote Natalie. Natalie. Two votes, Natalie. Laura. Two votes, Laura. Laura. That's three votes, Laura. <laughs> Natalie. That's four votes, Laura. Natalie. Laura. Natalie. We have a tie. Here's how the tie is going to work. Laura and Natalie, you will not vote. Everybody else will vote. You can only vote for Laura or Natalie. Unwavering in this decision. Okay, second round. Let's see what happens. First vote. Laura. Two votes, Laura. Laura. That's three votes, Laura. Natalie. Natalie. Tied again. Laura. That's four votes, Laura. Three votes, Natalie. One vote left. Ninth person voted out and the third member of our jury. Laura. Laura, the tribe is spoken. So let's break this down. How is Laura Moret as a character, as the opposition to Shambo, the nut, and Russell Hance, the evil main character? Laura stood her own when so many people this season get purpled in their edit. Laura made a name for herself by standing her ground, fighting, and ultimately losing. She lost both rivalries, and despite that, she was crucial to the story of the season. And it's a shame she didn't make it a few more episodes just to cause more chaos. I wonder how this merge goes, though, if Swan wasn't medically evacuated earlier and actually makes the merge and keeps glue together because even even Laura professes to not being a great leader for everyone, and Glue was in desperate need of one. Out of 14 character moments shown on the show, five were heroic and nine were villainous, making Laura Moret a villain on Survivor Samoa. Now, how is Laura Moret as a strategist? Since the show is so bent on making Russell Hance the main character and us sympathizing with him and Foa Foa and the crazy Shambo, yeah, Laura was placed in a negative light despite being the biggest threat on her tribe to win. She really spoke for Galoo as a whole many times. All of the women loved her and followed her, but this put a huge target on Laura's back come the merge. Plus, she mishandled Shambo so badly. That Eric vote out was crucial, and when Natalie flipped her, you gotta shake your head because Natalie was just like, just taking advantage of a situation that was so easy, especially when voting out a foe foe or even Shambo made the most sense. When Laura plays again, she needs to keep her threat level lowered because she is going to come back and play again, and she definitely shouldn't invite her daughter Sierra to play with her. That would be a bad idea. I have 28 strategic moments shown on the show. 14 were smart and 14 were dumb, making Laura Moret an average strategist on Survivor Samoa. Thank you for watching, and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time. There's a scripture that says, I know the, the plans I have for you, declares the Lord plans not to harm you, but plans to prosper you. And I completely believe that that's where I'm at right now. Um, he has plans for me. Clearly it wasn't to win this, but it's for something else. And I did everything that I could possibly do um, physically and mentally to win this game. And clearly I wasn't meant to win it. So I'm content.